friends. Have you ever wanted to use the vocoder? This is your lucky day. Today I thought I'd go over Ableton's awesome effect vocoder, which is so much more than just a vocal processor. There's just about a half trillion things you could do with it, so this will probably end up becoming a series. But for the first section of it, let's figure out how to set this thing up in the traditional way. Because vocoder is really awesome, and I feel like it was it's so capable that it's an effect for vocals that you could really explore and take somewhere. So. So now we have a fresh Ableton set, and let's do this from scratch. All right, so first things first, we're gonna grab a vocoder and we're gonna drop it into the track that my vocals are coming down. Okay, and here, <laughs> and this is what it sounds like now. Blah! The reason it sounds like this now is because vocoder actually has four modes. So we're gonna switch it to external. So switching vocoder to external mode, this is a traditional setup for a vocoder. This is how a vocoder traditionally works, okay? You have, um, two signals that you combine together to create the sound that you're making. The first signal is known as the carrier, okay? We don't have a carrier signal set up yet. The carrier is the pitch. So commonly that's a harmonically rich synthesizer sound or a, a synthesizer sound that has a lot of brightness to it, right? You have the full spectrum of sound, okay? And then the modulator. The modulator is something rhythmic, uh, something that provides rhythm, okay? Uh, and that's like, in, in this case, that'll be my voice, all right? So in order to make this work, we have to choose a synthesizer, right, that has a sound that sounds rich and harmonic. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a wavetable, right? And I'm just gonna put wavetable on something between saw and square, okay? So it sounds like this. And so then, what I'm gonna do is I need to tell vocoder, hey, I need you to take, this is gonna be your carrier signal, all right? So I'm gonna go to the drop-down menu here, audio from, one wavetable, all right? So now we have, hello. But we also can hear the synthesizer. That's not gonna work for us. We have to actually turn off the track that's playing the raw synthesizer sound. Now it's off. So now it should be set up to take my voice. Hello, test one, two. Chicka, chicka, chicka. This is the basic setup, but what we also wanna do, what I'm going to do at least, but I'm gonna grab a glue compressor and put the soft clip on so that I can't, hey, test one, two. No matter what I do, I can't pass zero, right? So I can't clip. This is just a quick little just tip in general when you're doing sound design. It's just nice to have this here with a little soft clipper on it. Test one, two, yeah. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the controls as to how to make this more convincing and how to make it sound better, right? So the first thing I'm gonna look at is this enhance button. Usually when you're sending signal from, from any synthesizer, it's gonna be weighted in certain areas. This synthesizer sound at this point, it's a pretty wide spectrum and sounds pretty good. But what, what Enhance can do, actually, when you click on it, what it does is it takes the signal that's coming in and it normalizes all the different frequency bands, okay? These are the frequency bands right here, right? These are all the different bands that are coming in. You can see my voice, it's reacting to my voice right now. But basically a vocoder works on a series of bands, okay? What the Enhance does is it takes, let's say that there's a lot of information coming from the low end, but not so much information coming from the top end. It'll normalize the top end, meaning it'll make all the frequency bands the same volume. So what this is gonna do when I have a synthesizer playing down low is it's going to take that weighted uh, frequency content from the low end and it's going to kind of push that down a little bit so that it sounds more balanced, right? So now we have, hello, test one, two. Hello, test one, two. Hello, test one, two. You can hear the top end coming in there, right? So that's the first thing we can do to make this sound better. I'll leave Enhance on. The next thing I wanna look at is unvoiced. Now what this does is this adds some noise Okay, this is, a no this is a noise oscillator, if you will. It adds some noise to the signal. Now, sometimes your S sounds and your F and all those different syllables can be a bit unintelligible when you're doing vocoding, right? It can kind of take those away and it reduces the intelligibility of what you're saying. Check this out. If I turn the unvoiced up, as I turn it up, it's gonna add uh, a noise layer to this. And what's cool about it is that the noise layer is in stereo. So check this out. Hello, test, hello, test, hello, test, hello, test, hello, test. Pretty sweet, right? 
It's just a little bit more intelligibility. So then the next thing we're looking at is the sensitivity. 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 So the thing to know about this is that it's always on. Okay? Like, uh, whereas normally when you have to play a note on your keyboard in order to hear your voice with this setup, the unvoiced noise is always on. So it's always oscillating. Meaning that if I turn this up and I'm just talking without playing, hello, test, hello, test, you can hear it come in, right? And that's also where the sensitivity comes in. This sensitivity will say, okay, the amplitude has to pass a certain amount before it actually triggers the noise. So I can turn this up and not have as much issues only when I f only when I make syllabants. So then there's a detection speed setting where you can go from fast to slow, 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 fast to slow. Basically, you can see it reacts quicker and slower based on that setting. Super simple. All right. So anyway, let's get to the more juicy stuff. So now that we have this set up, hello, test. One of the main things that determines the tone of the vocoder is this bands section. At this point, we have 20 bands, right? You can see them. You can count them. There's 20 bands. What you can do is, hello, test. You could think of this as a giant EQ, right? It's just a giant EQ that you can, you know, sweep the mids out if you want or do whatever. What these actually are, these are bandpass filters, each one of these bands, right? So if I make this really small, let's do eight. If I change the bands, it sounds different. Hello, test. Hello, test. Hello. So as I change the bands, I get different tones, okay? And these bands are arranged across the frequency spectrum that I choose. So there's a range here. See how it says 12K? That's the highest that it'll go. And then 80 hertz is the lowest it'll go. 80 hertz is kind of low for vocals. I don't need it to be that low. So maybe I'll do something like 200. Hello, test, hello. And maybe I could bring it down to 10K for my vocals. Hello, check, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> and then we have bandwidth. This is really, really cool. So you can actually dial back the bandwidth of each one of these filters. At this point, one at 100%, basically one filter ends where the next one begins. So, hello, test one, two, hello, 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 hello. And if we pull it down low enough, we eventually just get notes, right? We get those ringing kind of, uh, we get those like sine waveforms, right? Hello, test, hello. And you can hear as I move my voice up and down through the notes that are being played, it's actually triggering different ones because these bands are so thin. Now you can also go the opposite direction where the bands start to go into each other's ranges. So hello, test, hello, test, hello, test, hello, test. So there's, there's, so there's basically, there's flexibility. At above 100%, you're going to get bands that are crossing over each other's ranges. At lower than 100%, they're going to start to be super isolated, right? You, essentially, what this will do as you turn this down is it will remove kind of noise from the signal and get very, very, very specific notes, okay? Pretty cool stuff. Then we have this precise and retro mode. These are kind of voicings of these filters, right? So And so, yeah, in precise mode, every single filter is going to have the same exact gain and bandwidth. So, like, as I change this, all these are going to be the same. But if I put it in retro mode, it's going to weight things toward the top end. Hello, test, hello, test, hey. Hello, test, hello, test, hey. Hello, test, hello. Moving on, we yeah, have gate. gate. What gate does is it's basically a gate instance for each one of the bands, right? So as I turn the threshold up, okay, what's going to happen is, is that not all, the, not all the gates are going to trigger. It's based on what it's seeing in my input, right? So my voice happens to be in kind of this range right here. So as I turn this up, hello, 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 hello. eventually we only get some of those firing at once. Check one, two, hello, check one, two. And then level, this is just a boost or a cut of the bands themselves. So if you're if you're finding that the vocoder is quiet, you can just turn this up. Yeah, yeah check, check one, two, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It can while out really easily, so be careful there. All right, so that's that area. Let's go ahead and put this on 12 bands just for the fun of it. Hello, test. And so, of course, you can do some things where you're pulling out certain frequencies. I could maybe make this different. Hello, test. Check one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. 
So now the depth knob, this is where things start to get really interesting. At 0%, what happens is, is that my voice is going to be completely ignored and I can just play through the bandpass filters, right? So just remember, this isn't dry. What this means is that just the bandpass processing is going to be in there, right? So as I turn this up, when the depth goes above 100%, we start to filter out some of the lows of my voice until just the top end is being used. So in the middle, you have kind of a blend, right, between the modulator signal, which is my voice, blending with the carrier signal, and this is kind of like a good setting. But what's rad about it is that if you back this off a little bit, I've noticed, I kind of like this sound when it comes to traditional vocoding. Check one, two, three, test one. So then we have, uh, you know, your classic envelope. So this is how fast the vocoder is going to react to your voice. So if I turn this up pretty high, it's a great way to soften that. And then of course release, this is even cooler if you get, hey, So yeah, that's like good for like mouth beats and things like that. That's lower and then. So then moving on to my favorite control of vocoder completely and that's the formant uh, control. Now what this does is it is, it's actually, it's kind of like the cutoff knob of all of these bandpass filters, okay? All of these filters here can be edited with this formant. So. What that means is that if this range is 10K and this range is 215 Hertz, right? So that's the low and that's the high. As I move this formant filter up and down, it's shifting this. So maybe right here, this is now 12 and this is 400 or something. As I move this up, it doesn't show you that, but that's what's going on, right? The formant is just shifting all these bandpass filters uh, frequency up and down. So you can get incredibly awesome sounds. So you can see like the practical application for vocals there, right? But you can dial this range in really, really, really narrowly. So I'm going from 500 hertz to, let's go to 3K. And you might say, well, that doesn't sound very good, you know, where it is. But if you move Foreman around, So this is the basis for some really awesome sound design. Now, the, there's three different modes for the processing of the vocoder. In this case, what we're doing is we're looking at the modulator, which is my voice, being mono. And this is kind of the, the default setting in stereo. What that means is that the carrier is in stereo, but the uh, modulator, which is my voice, is in mono, right? And that's kind of ha how we've got it going on. You can make the entire thing mono so that the carrier and the modulator is in mono, or you can make them both in stereo. So this would be a good setup for if you're using um, loops or drums or something else where you want to vocode one sound with another. And then finally, of course, you have a dry wet control. So as I turn this down, you can hear me. Hello. Cool. So that's the traditional way to use vocoder. And vocoder is great in this format. And I, I use it on stage. Like I'm, I'm totally confident with this thing. And it's great. It's not like unstable. Um, you can get away with really doing some really amazing stuff. But vocoder does not stop there. There are four modes to explore. And there's so much that you can do with vocoder that you might not have thought of right away. And that'll be the subject matter for the next video that I, I do in this little vocoder series. Um, so cool. I also want to say that I'm working on a synthesis and sound design online course. So if you're interested in learning about that, uh, put your email in the description. It'll be in the comments. It'll also be uh, maybe up here in the corner. <laughs> uh, just put your email in there and I'll let you know when that is going to be released. I also at this point have Ableton courses on songwriting and composition as well as mixing and mastering. So if you're interested in any of that, links will be available. If you like this kind of thing, this is what I do. Uh, much love everybody. You have a great day, and I'll see you next time.